In this video, I'll show you how to find the terminal velocity of a falling object using image tracking software. This is useful, for example, if you want to do an experiment to find out what happens if a parachute fails to deploy during a spacecraft's landing. Let's start with a quick crash course, no pun intended, in terminal velocity. In classical physics, when an object falls, it is pulled down by its weight, a force that exists because of gravity pulling on the object's mass. Assuming you're in a constant gravitational field and the object's mass doesn't change, this weight remains constant. As the object falls, it experiences air resistance or drag. This force points opposite the direction of motion, and it increases as the object goes faster. In general, when an object first starts falling with very low velocity, the drag force is very small, so the object accelerates downward. However, as it falls faster and faster, the drag force keeps getting bigger until eventually it is exactly equal and opposite to the weight. Since these two forces cancel out, there is no net force on the object and it stops accelerating. This is when we say it has reached its terminal velocity. It will never fall any faster. If we make a graph of a falling object's velocity versus time, it will look something like this with time on the x-axis and velocity on the y-axis with positive velocity defined as downward towards the ground, the velocity first increases very quickly and then gradually starts to level off as it approaches the terminal velocity, but it never exceeds the terminal velocity. Predicting terminal velocity is very important for engineers who design parachutes so people and spacecraft can land safely. So in the rest of this video, we'll show you how to find it experimentally and how to use an equation to predict it. Note that technically this experiment works with any object you can drop, but I'll be using this plastic cup to represent a crew capsule tied with string to three parachutes made from plastic bags. This lets me do an experiment to simulate what happens if one or more of the parachutes fails to deploy. In addition to an object to drop, you'll need a few other things to conduct this experiment. You'll need a safe high location to drop your object from. A ladder or step stool works well, but you can also drop it from a window or balcony. You'll need a meter stick in the frame for scale, and you should mount your phone or camera on a tripod so you have stable video. It's important to make sure your object appears in the frame for the entire duration of the fall, from where you first drop it to where it touches the ground. This may be easier if you film in portrait or vertical orientation instead of landscape or horizontal. Although you'll notice that here I still started too high, so it can be helpful to have a second person operate the camera. After filming your tests, you can use motion tracking software to track your object's motion and find its terminal velocity. I'll be doing this with a free program called Tracker, which is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but other programs and apps may be available. You can follow a tutorial on Tracker's website to learn how to use the software, but I'll also demonstrate some of the basics here. Open the program, then click the Open button and Open File Chooser to select your video file. Then click Open and give it a minute for the video to load. Your screen should now look like this. I'm going to move these sliders to make the video bigger and use the controls at the bottom to get to the part of the video where I'm about to drop the parachute. Now remember that we included a meter stick in the video for scale. This lets us tell the program how far one meter is in the image so it can convert between pixel distance in each video frame and real world distance. We can do that calibration either by clicking on the calibrate button here or selecting track, new, calibration tools, calibration stick. This will create a calibration stick on the screen, which is this blue line here with a default length of one meter, but you can change the length here if you used something other than a meter stick for calibration. You can click and drag the ends of the blue line on the screen so they line up with the ends of your meter stick and then your calibration is complete. Next, we are going to rotate the default coordinate system in Tracker, which by default has positive X to the right and positive Y facing up. We are going to rotate that so it's upside down and positive Y faces down that way, when the object falls down, it will calculate the velocity as positive, and we don't have to worry about dealing with negative velocities. So we're going to do that by clicking on this button here to show the coordinate system. Click on the coordinate system to select it. You can drag the origin to move it if you want, but since we are only tracking velocity and not worried about the signs of the X and Y positions, it doesn't really matter where you position the origin. 
we are just going to go up here to angle from horizontal and change that to 180, which is going to rotate the whole coordinate system by 180 degrees, so the positive y direction is now downward. You can choose to leave the coordinate system and calibration stick on the screen, but if you think they're in your way, you can turn them off by clicking these two buttons again to remove them. They still exist, they are just not shown on the screen. Now that we've done that setup work, we are almost ready to start tracking. I'm going to go up here to Track, New, Point Mass, and by default, that is going to create two plots over here on the left. One, sorry, over here on the right. One for the X position and one for the Y position. We want to add a plot to track the Y velocity. So I'm going to go up down here to the Plots drop down, select 3. And then I'm going to click on the y-axis label for this third plot and change that to vy velocity y component. I'm also going to expand the graphs area a bit to make these graphs bigger and easier to see. Next, I'm going to use the play bar controls to advance the video to just before I actually drop the parachute. So I'm going to play, and if I accidentally go too far, I can pause it and then use the frame by frame controls to back up a few frames to just before I drop it. Now, I'm going to track the object by holding down Shift on my keyboard, which you will see changes the normal mouse cursor to this little target indicator. And I'm going to click on the same spot on this cup each time. So when I hold down Shift and click, it will add a tracking point and automatically advance the video by one frame. So you can see as I do that, it's starting to add points to the graphs over on the right automatically. And then as it starts to fall, we will see those values changing, the X and Y position and the Y velocity. So I'm going to track this all the way down to the floor. I'm not going to do a screen recording of that entire process, but when I'm done, we will come back and take a look at the graphs. So I finished tracking and we can take a look at the velocity graph for my lander. We can see that the velocity increases very rapidly at the beginning and then it sort of levels off, which is what we would have expected for an object approaching its terminal velocity. But then interestingly, it actually decreases a bit to a new somewhat constant level. And if I put up the graph we showed earlier for what the ideal velocity graph would look like, we can see that this is a little different for a couple reasons. First, this is a real world experiment, so we have some noise or fluctuations in the data. I'm doing my best to click on the exact same spot on that little plastic cup each time, but I'm not perfect, so if I'm off by a couple pixels, that is going to affect the program's velocity calculation. Next, this ideal graph is for an object with a constant shape, but that is not what we have in this experiment. We have parachutes that are starting out all bunched up and then deploying or spreading out. So I can actually use the play controls to go back through my video and the program will highlight the data point corresponding to the frame of the video. So we can see that my velocity is zero here just before I have dropped it. And then as I drop it, the velocity very rapidly increases, and we can't quite see the parachutes yet because they're out of the top of the frame here. But you'll notice that as it falls into the frame and I'm at this higher constant velocity, the parachutes are not fully spread out yet. All three of them are still very bunched together. And as I advance through the video, we see that as the parachutes spread out, the velocity goes back down. So the shape of the object has changed and I reach my final terminal velocity as the parachutes are all spread out. Another way to think about this in terms of the physics we saw earlier is that we have a falling object that has reached its terminal velocity where the weight and drag forces are equal and it has zero acceleration. Then the parachute deploys, which immediately increases the drag force. This causes acceleration opposite the direction of motion, or deceleration. This causes the object to slow down to a new terminal velocity, but as it slows down, the drag force decreases again until the object is once again in equilibrium and the acceleration is zero. So looking at our graph again, remembering that we're always going to have some fluctuations in real world data due to various sources of experimental error, like where exactly I'm clicking on the cup and the parachutes fluttering around a bit and changing shape slightly even after they are deployed. 
we can read off the final terminal velocity of the deployed parachutes, either by drawing a horizontal line through this section of the data and reading off the value on the y-axis, which looks like it's around 1.1 meters per second, or you could find the value of a bunch of these individual data points and calculate their average. So that is how you can experimentally find the terminal velocity of a falling object. Next, we are going to look at how you can predict the terminal velocity using an equation. The equation to calculate terminal velocity is VT equals the square root of 2mg over rho ACD. Now, don't worry if that looks a little intimidating. I will explain what each term in the equation means and how you can find it or calculate it. So for starters, VT is the terminal velocity in meters per second. This is what you are trying to solve for. M is the object's mass in kilograms. G is the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second squared. Rho is the air density in kilograms per cubic meter. A is the cross-sectional area of the object in meters squared. And CD is the drag coefficient. This is a dimensionless number that depends on the object's shape. The terminal velocity is what you're trying to solve for and what you can compare to your experimental results once you've found it using all of the other parameters. The mass must be measured in kilograms, so be careful with your units. If you're doing this as a science project at home, you might be using a kitchen scale that measures in grams, so you can convert grams to kilograms by dividing by 1,000. For example, 100 grams divided by 1,000 is 0.1 kilograms. G, the acceleration due to gravity, is 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth, although this value would be different on a different planet. So, for example, if you want to calculate the terminal velocity of a spacecraft landing on Mars, you would need to look up this value for the gravity on Mars. Similarly, rho, the air density, is about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter on Earth, but this value will be different at different altitudes or on different planets. So if you were doing this for Mars, you would need to look up the density of Mars' atmosphere. The area can be a little tricky. This is the cross-sectional area of the object in a plane perpendicular to the direction of motion. It is not the surface area of the entire object. So, for example, if you were dropping a sphere, you would imagine slicing it through the middle and finding the area of that circle you would not be finding the surface area of the entire sphere. Finally, the drag coefficient is a number that depends on the object's shape. It is about 1.75 for parachutes, but if you're dropping something else, you can look up tables of drag coefficients for different shapes online. Once you have all six of these numbers, you can plug them into the equation, solve for terminal velocity, and compare it to your experimental results. Remember that you can find written instructions for this project in the video description, along with over a thousand other project ideas at our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.